Now the mic's on. Hello and welcome to another VR tutorial. In this one, we're going to carry on from last week where we left off. And um, last week we had a look at actually creating our gun. So when we pulled trigger, it raycasts into the scene and we got uh, some feedback in the console about what was happening. Now we're going to link up our target so that the target knows when it's been shot and to carry out some actions. Let's dive right in. So before we get stuck in, I just very quickly wanted to go over what it was we did last time. For those of you that may not have been following along with these tutorials. So last week we had a look at hooking up our gun. And uh, what we did is we created this gun script here. We put on the root of our gun object. And this was listening for, so if I open up, up in Visual Studio, it makes more sense. So here is the, um, the gun script as it stands. Uh, and all we're doing at the moment is on awake. On awake, we're just getting hold of the audio component. If it's not there, we're going to add the audio source on so that we've got um, some an audio source to play our gun sounds. And then on, on enable and on disable, we're just listening for the trigger pulled on the controllers. Uh, and when the trigger is pulled, uh, it's going to trigger a method called trigger pulls. It's a lot of triggers. Uh, and it's going to send a haptic impulse to the controller. And it's also going to play some audio, which is our gunfire sound. And then it's going to fire raycast into the scene. And this is a method on its own, just here, just below. And all this is doing at the minute is firing a raycast from the barrel of our gun out into the scene. And it's looking to see if we've hit the target layer. And if we do, then it's going to show a debug log message in the console. So let's go ahead and take a look at that in action in VR. Here we are on our game view. We're going to grab the gun into that a couple of tutorials ago. I pull the trigger, you get the audio and the haptic rumble. And then also what's happening is ray casting. Getting confused about what hands you can see. My virtual hands on my non-virtual. And here, when you pull the trigger, it's ray casting from the gun out into the And then join the debug message console. And you can see there on the bottom of the console, I've got a hit target. That's great. But now in this one, we want to make it so when we shoot the target, the target knows it's been shot and then does some actions. And to do that, we're going to use an interface. Also, it's probably worth going over. A, a couple of you last week did mention that you had some problems with the hand on the, the grabbing the gun. So your hand animates normally uh, and comes back fine when you press the grip. When you go and pick up the gun and then release, it gets, it's getting stuck like this, so it won't open up again. Um, and I found that the reason for that was something on the on the right hand controller and the left hand controller, you've got the direct interactors. You go ahead and uncheck hide controller on select. And then if you run it again, oops, there we go, hide controller on select. And then go and run it. You'll see that when you let go, the hand will spring back into some form. So obviously something going on there with the direct interactor and, and I hope some kind of update. I don't think it's something we've done in our scripts. I haven't done anything different. But if we do want to decide we want to hide the controller model later on, um, then we can go about it and write a script to do that ourselves. But let's get started with this interface and then we can have our, ta our targets react to being shot. So you may have heard me mention that we're going to use an interface to connect up our gun and our target so that it, the target knows when it's been shot. Uh, many of you might not be familiar with using interfaces and that's okay, we're going to go over it as, as much, as, much as we can do and make it as clear as possible. But a way to think about an interface, if we have a common set of functionality, we can group that and bundle it all within an interface. But an interface on its own doesn't really store any logic code or any kind of values. Instead, it's up to the inheriting class to use the methods laid out in the interface, and then you can generate your own code inside that class. So you can think about an interface as being like a contract that states that whatever class inherits from our interface has to have a particular set of methods. Let's go ahead and we'll create our interface for our target. So in your, in your scripts folder, I'm going to go to my targets folder. I've got one just made here. And I'm going to right click and I am going to go to, okay, create a C sharp script. Now, naming here with interfaces is a bit different to your normal standard class. 
We want to start it off with a capital I. We can call this target interface. You don't need the interface on there. I, I just put it in there to make it clear it, what it is. For those of you that may not have used them before, I'm gonna go ahead and double once that's compiled. I'm gonna go ahead and double click and open it up in Visual Studio. Now our interface doesn't use any of the normal namespaces like our normal class would. So we can go ahead and remove everything. And the syntax for getting this started is going to be public. Then you want to write interface. And then the name of your interface, which is I target. You could very easily just call this I target and drop a line and open your Kali braces. Now it's here where we need to consider what are the common elements of our targets. We need to know when each target has been shot. So a good name for a method might be void. So we just want to list some methods that all our inheriting classes must have. So it's going to have a void tar target shot. And we also want to play an animation. So we could say void play animation. And all my typing today, play animation. And then the last method we want each of our targets to have is going to be when it has to play some audio. So we can say void play audio. All we've done is we've created this contract, this interface that says that whenever we inherit from the I target interface, that class must have a target shoot method, it must have a play animation method, and it must have a play audio method. Let's now hook this up in a, an actual script for our, our targets. And we can show you how, how you can link it together to our gunfire script. So back in your targets folder, let's right click and we're going to actually create our target script. This is the script that's going to sit on the target and go ahead and call this target controller. And then what we'll do is we'll double click to open up in Visual Studio. So now this is the target script that's going to actually sit on the object that we've shot. And we need to connect it up to our interface. And to do that, we're going to Go to where it says the public class target controller at the top and then mono behavior and we're going to put a comma here and we're going to write i target interface and now everything seems okay and that's good but you should get a red squiggly line and that's not nothing to worry about it's just warning us that our current class does not implement the interface so we're not using any methods that we've just created from our interface target shoot Play animation and play audio. And to fix this, you can hover over the squiggly line, control, full stop, and then you should get the implement interface box pop up and go ahead and uh, implement it like so. I'm going to remove the start and update. And you can see here by implementing this in interface, it's actually created three methods the play animation method, the play audio, and the target shot method. And here's where you can, you might be able to see the power of interfaces now starting to make sense because what we could do is we can make various different classes and scripts that all inherit from iTarget interface, but all contain these methods. But in each method, in each class, we can do something different inside the method. But although it inherits, inherits from the interface, you can actually do custom functionality in each class in, it inherits from. I'm just going to go ahead and jig this around a bit because the most important one we want to deal with is the target shot. So I'm going to just go ahead and cut and paste it to the top like so and save to make this a bit bigger for you. See what's going on. So this is great. We've inherited from our interface and we're going to say that our class is going to use these three common methods from our interface. So now we can go ahead and do something. So once the target has been shot, we can say destroy, go in brackets, and just put in game object. And then let's save that for a minute. And it doesn't matter that we haven't put any code inside our play animation. You could just write like to do, whatever you want in there really. You can just leave it empty. So this is going to sit on our target. So when our target has been shot, it's going to destroy itself. So let's go ahead minimize that and we'll drag our target controller onto our target in the scene so you see we've got a target drop it on there and there's a script that sits on our target object called target controller 
But how does our target know when it's been shot? Well, that's up. To, that's going to be handled by the gun ray cast. So we're going to open up that script, tweak it a little bit, and then we'll give it a test. Let's go and find our gun in the scene, which is our gun parent. Scroll down and double click on the gun script. Okay, so when our trigger's pulled, app ticks, gunfire sound, fires a raycast. Firing of the raycast happens here in this statement. And what we're doing is we're raycasting from the barrel position out into the world in the forward direction. And then we're storing whatever we hit in the out hit here. And we also we are also checking that the object that we've hit is in our target layer, which we, we set up in our last video. And you know, we know this works because we're getting a debug message in the console. But rather than a debug message, let's find out if the object we've hit is inheriting from our iTarget interface. We need to test to see whether this hit transform has got our iTarget interface on it. So we can say if hit dot transform dot get component and we want to know if it's got the i target interface which has because what our script the target controller is inheriting from that so therefore it will have it and then you want your brackets and we want to check if it's not null so if the target is inheriting from the i target interface then it's going to do this stuff which is going to be hit dot transform dot get component we want to get hold of the i target interface this is where we're going to start leveraging the power of the interface now and after our brackets but full stop and then here you're going to see the list of all your methods contained within that interface we've got target shot play audio and play animation well our target's been shot so we're going to tell our interface that the target has been shot so we're going to go ahead and click on there put in our brackets and add to semicolon. If our object that we've hit hasn't doesn't inherit from our interface, it, it basically does nothing. So you could put a debug in here if you want to, or you don't even really need the else. But I'm just going to go ahead and write here debug.log not inheriting from interface. So that may be a bit confusing. I'm just going to go over it one more time. We raycast out into the scene, hit something, so we store it in hit. We then check that transform that we've hit to see if it is inheriting from the interface. And if it is, then it's going to call the target shot method on that component. And if it's not, then it's just going to put a debug to our console. So once we've called the target shot method on our interface, our target controller, because it inherits from the interface, is going to go, aha, target shot, and it's going to do this method, which is going to be destroy game object. And because it's sitting on our target, it's going to destroy the target. So let's go back into Visual into Unity, wait for it to compile, and let's give it a test. So here we are in our scene, we've got the gun. Now, we're going to go ahead and shoot the target. And you can see the interface is called. Raycast is detected that that object had the interface on it. That's our target controller parroting from the interface. The target shot method was called on the interface and the target controller then turned the game object off. That's how we've linked it together. We've linked the guns to our target through the raycast, then checking for an interface on our target that we shot, calling the appropriate method. Let's quickly jump back into our click on our target, our target controller here and double click the script. So now we've got that bridge between our gun and our target. You can literally do anything now once we've shot the target. So we, we don't necessarily need to destroy it. We could do anything. You could, from once the target's been shot, which connects our raycast to our target, we could say play animation. So we could call that method within this class. So we could say play animation. Once it's been shot, that's what we want to do. So it's going to come and play this animation. We also probably would want to play the audio. So we could say play audio. And then you might also want to, when we get to it, we'll be telling um, 
the game manager that the target's been shot and to assign the appropriate amount of points. So you probably do all that here. So we've got some to-dos here. And this is going to be probably next week's tutorial so they don't get too long and too overwhelming. So I think it's probably a good place to leave the video here. We've actually done quite a lot. We've actually now set up, we've had a look at what interfaces are and then implemented them now in our game so that when we shoot a target, that interface is used to then trigger the target shot method in our target controller class. So next week we'll take a look at actually connecting up our animations and audio to this class and we'll look at extending its functionality a little bit because we need to consider that when a target's been shot it needs to have its animation play out and scores assigned before you can then shoot it again because what you don't want to do is just keep shooting the target and the animation just keeps going and going so we'll put in a little bit of delay in there as well but we'll take a look at all that next week. So so just as a quick example of what, we've, what we'll have at the end of next week I'll probably have a little bit more than this because I'll, I'll, I'll start doing the 3D models for the um, the targets but uh, this is the, the higher res Patreon members scene um, but I've been testing around in this one but this will give you an idea of what we're working towards next week now that we've set up our interface battery is low so then when you pull the trigger you get a sound, the target reacts, plays that little, little animation. As you can see, once you've triggered it, you can't trigger it again until it's ready. A John Wick practice. There we go, I really hope you enjoyed this week's video. Although it doesn't feel like it, we've actually got quite a lot done. We've now connected up our gun to our targets using an interface. So now our targets react to when they're shot. If you're learning some stuff and finding these videos useful, it'd be great to have you along and on board as a subscriber and also leaving a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. Well that's it for now, I'll see you next week.